Stay in tune, like horrors, and welcome back to another episode of Rogue Tech, as we can do the campaigns of Rippers Rumblers, and last time we got introduced to a brand new mech building system which allowed us to construct a ridiculous number of mechs. We currently have five, well, four now, in the current making up of being built from scratch, so that's really interesting. Even our first heavy mech, our dragon, which we have equipped an Ultra Auto Cannon 20 onto, that's not going to be done for a while, but one of our new mechs is ready, and it's time to bring it out to play in Brilliant Minds. Commander, we, have perf we perform a substantial amount of scientific research here in New Athens. Davian forces have been sabotaging our research stations, stretching our defenses thin. We just learned that their ultimate target is a key scientist in our weapons development program. They've launched an assault that we believe is intended to capture her. We need you to reach the facility where she's stationed and extract her to safety. So uh, this will be paying out 4 of 17 priority salvage, a decent amount of sea bill payment at 2.5 skulls. So nothing too crazy, nothing too dangerous. The next mission that we're taking at a higher level needs the A team to do it. So the B team is relegated to something a little less dangerous. So with that in mind, we have the B team all lined up in their... Well, it's not brand new. One of them is, though. Brother in the Hatchet Man Bullet Trap in the Gauntlet. The Gauntlet is basically a Steiner designed, well, redesigned bushwhacker. It's an Omnimech with a whole bunch of fun stuff, including a built-in advanced mask, which is rather interesting. Also a built-in light engine, it's just built-in a whole ton of stuff. This mech took us nine days to build from the bottom up. Normally, we're looking at between 20 and 30 days, depending on the mech tonnage. This thing was nine and it has a little bit of an unconventional loadout. I decided I needed a couple of more hole punchers in the lance. We have a whole bunch of people who can scatter fire all over the place, namely the Shadowhawk and the Starhawk, which Hacker is in the Shadowhawk and Majestic's in his Starhawk as normal. And because of that, we really need somebody who can just walk up to you and just rip giant holes in you. And that's kind of what the Gauntlet has been designed to do. We've put on two Snubnose BPCs and a pair of ER Smalls. It's relatively chill. It's going to be quite fast with the advanced mask, and it should be decently enough armored to sort of survive the incoming fire. That's my plan, although plans don't necessarily always work out, so we're going to find out today. So let us head forward towards the facility, see if we can't find the enemy, and then break them into little tiny pieces. So the gauntlet being an Omnimech means that swapping weapons and the like is very easy, very simple, and very quick. And by doing that, that's one of the reasons why it took nine days in order to actually refit the entire mech, because from the ground up we had to put in a whole bunch of stuff. There are downsides. Uh, for example, you have locked-in equipment. This advanced mask, we didn't have this. We didn't put this in there. It's part of the mech. You can't remove it. The light engine, even though I think it's one of the best engine types for the Intersphere until the Clan XLs come out, it's built into the mech. You can't get rid of it, as is things like the endosteel and the gyro. So you can't get rid of this stuff, which limits you in some ways, but there's a lot of flexibility to be gained by it. So it's an interesting take on mech technology, and it's one I think that we're going to take as much advantage of as we possibly can. So if Hacker is up next. We might run into the enemy this round. We're about to find out. Oh yes, we absolutely did. We have an Urbimech and an Urbimech. Okay, so another Urbi posse. And this is the fault, of course, of us being in Capellan space, because Capellans apparently use Urban Mechs all the time. It's weird. Also because we're fighting the Davians, so I'm not quite sure why that is the case, but hey, maybe it's salvage. That's kind of what I'm going to go with. So let's have Bullet Trap try out his new system. We are going to activate the mask system. Uh, the advanced mask system, that is, and see just how far this thing will actually go at a full sprint. He'll basically get right on top of somebody, so we'll do that. We'll identify another urban mech. Oh, it's an urban mech 2C, so this is a clan urban mech. Uh, we'll attempt to take that in as much intact as possible, and apparently somebody started a fire off here in the distance, which is a bit of a problem, because that's going to burn down the entire bloody forest. Hi, you have a howitzer 2000. Okay, die please. Or, you know, steal it. That would be better. Ooh, brother. Brother, brother, brother. I need you to move as fast as possible. I need you to demonstrate the mask and the supercharger. The maximum speed combination that we once again have this hatchet man operating with. To see just how fast it can go. And it's really having to calculate hard to figure out just how fast will this thing actually go. And for actual reference, he is now within range. This is walk range, by the way. Sprinting range! Yeah, we get to go wherever the heck we want. That's how this works. So we're going to walk up here and we're going to break him because I want a Howitzer 2000. And in order to make sure that we don't, you know, kill the entirety of the mech, we're going to attack from the side. 
There we go. We have saved the Howitzer 2000. We may have blown up the ammo, and I'm kind of hoping we didn't. I didn't see Howitzer 2000 ammo in there, so we've preserved the gun. Which, you know, is the only thing I care about at the end of the day. Got an Urban Mech RHW, an Urban Mech RH... Er, R60H and the Clan 2C. The Clan 2C should be armed with an Ultra Auto Cannon, so we kind of do want to put a little bit of pressure on him relatively soon. Uh, we'll probably actually just walk up and hit him with an axe. I don't believe Urban Mech's, uh, Urban Mech 2Cs even have an XL engine, so if that will be the case, then just coring him out is not a problem at all. Got a little bit of movement coming from one of the, the Urban Mech R60H. Not sure what the H stands for, but we'll find out. Yep. Oh, wow. You have a Gauss rifle. You have a clan Gauss rifle. I'm going for you. So we want more parts and more parts and more things and stuff. Stuff is always really good. The RHW is also a massive howitzer. Okay, you've got to be over there right now. Uh, because if we get hit by one of those, it's pretty much game over. So let's sprint on forward. And yeah, we're risking an R60H, which I'm not quite sure what that'll do. But I'm concerned about this guy. Or not, yeah, definitely you. So let's unload. The B team needs to survive artillery, so they better get in their button gear really quickly. I'm really hoping that we can make most of that hit the location I want. Uh, chance to fail is zero, so we're going to continue our maximum speed sprinting off to the side. We'll get a side angle shot in here. The R put. Ooh, we didn't want to activate that because there could be more enemies. Hi! Yeah, he's got another Howitzer 2000. Uh, you know what? Oh, no, I can't. Oh, you got to do it at the beginning of the turn. I have thought I kind of wanted to activate the PPC capacitors, but that's not going to be a thing. Uh, we missed a lot of that, actually, so that's a bit of a problem. Brother is well within range, but he's starting to build up that crash. But you know what? I'm not willing to risk it. I don't know what a Howitzer 2000 is going to do. I'm not going to risk it doing anything. And, okay, it doesn't look like any ammo was in there, so we're good. He's probably going to have to shut down his mask and his supercharger in the next turn to make sure that it doesn't explode. That would, of course, be very, very bad. We are, of course, making it so that the 2C is on his own, which is helpful to us. Uh, you have unknown weapons, but it doesn't look like any sort of gigantic cannon, so fire away. Uh, could you be just a little bit more accurate on all medium lasers? I, I grant you it's a 50% chance to hit, but still, that was pretty terrible. All right, enemy gets to move. Their 2C is on the roll. And luckily for us, he was not actually in range to do anything. Their server mech is equipped with an AC-10. Okay, so the R-60H is nothing special. Hacker. Uh, yeah, you're actually going to maneuver over here if you can. Uh, wonderful. And we're going to basically burn this guy down. Because we will deal with his buddy on his own. That way we can potentially, you know, kill him without destroying all of his really cool stuff honestly if i could you know blow off his head i would absolutely do that but i'm not sure that's going to be an option uh you need to deactivate the mask and the supercharger we're starting to get into levels that i'm not really comfortable working with reset that to see if we're still within range i do not believe we are we are not so if we want to actually get involved with him we'll ha we'd have to sprint for it but instead what we're going to do is we're going to start heading towards the 2c we can get a pretty decent amount of evasion going with that anyway yeah majestic and uh Sorry, hacker. Should have little to no trouble actually finishing this guy off. So that's what they're going to do. When the Shadowhawks start ganging up on you, you're going to have a bad day. And he's got an, ult he's got an AC-10. So nothing special out of this mech at all. Incredibly ignorable. All right, here comes the 2C. Let's see what it's actually going to do. He is in range, and he managed to hit us with one of his clan mediums and also started a fire, which is unfortunate. Uh, Bullet Trap, how's your problems going? Uh, not that one. Uh, 15%. You know what? Kick the capacitor on. Let's let's go give him a little bit of a love tap. Uh, we do not want to attack his right side because we want to save that clan gauss rifle if at all possible. Hi! Um, yeah, to... Ooh, what do you got in here? Well, we're gonna have to open him up. I'd love to hit him, you know, in the... Ooh, that leg actually was a really good hit. If I can, you know, keep it focused on to hacking off legs, that would be ideal. Uh, is there any... Uh, there is a position I can't get on you but it's like a super long range. There it is. If I go way up here, I can start sniping down on him with my MRMs. That's a terrible plan. I mean, it's not great, but it's not a terrible plan. And the reason is because I'm trying to blow off a leg which is already somewhat weakened. So if I can just sort of direct enough fire to him, I should hopefully make it so that he's exposed to my follow-up fire. Uh, you need to basically charge forward. You're gonna... Ooh, I don't want to go for that side shot. Yeah, we're gonna face him head on. And we're going to hopefully not hit the right side at all. We're going for this left side here. Actually, if I can take out the legs, that'd be ideal. 
but taking out just the legs on this mech is going to be kind of difficult. You probably would have to travel up the mountain alongside him if you wanted to get an angle, so you're probably just going to sprint forward. We'll go through the geothermal, we don't really care, we're chilling out this turn. Uh, bullet trap, you have shooting scoot, so that's exactly what it is you're going to do. Uh, how much has he got? Oh, it's so close to being blown apart. Maybe we maneuver to the other side. Yeah, we gotta unselect that. So, uh, the mask to off, we don't want to worry about that. And we will walk to his other side. Hi, I've got a really good shot on you, so now I'm going to offensive push you. I'm going to go for the leg. Don't kill his arm, don't kill his arm, don't kill his arm, don't kill his arm. Both of his legs are red and exposed. Let's see how he wants to handle this one. Point blank range, guys, managed to nail us pretty dead on, so that was uncomfortable. Uh, not exactly the most fun thing ever, but he has exposed his legs to incoming long range fire. Hacker, uh, are you now? You are. You're facing his side. Um, blow that leg clean off, please. I think you can do it. Come on, you can do it, you can do it. I believe in you more. He couldn't do it! <laughs> Why? I'm just trying to save most of this mech. Why do you not want me to keep you alive? I know why he doesn't want me to keep you alive. Because he wants to keep his secrets for himself. Ah, uh, we don't fire everything. We fire just enough. I think we got it. Leg off. Engine destroyed. That was not the plan. Alright then, I guess, uh, brother, is your systems off? Yes, they are. Okay, lovely. Uh, let's go step on the base and just get on out of here, I suppose. And you are going to absolutely deactivate the PPC capacitor, uh, because it's still on? Yes, it is. So capacitor to off, and yeah. So that actually worked out fairly well in terms of the first test run of the gauntlet. We basically walked into the area, got into the positions we needed to, and poured fire on. Now, I'd like to get a little bit better accuracy on that. Uh, I can't add weapon mounts because they're... It doesn't have lower arm actuators for reasons that I'm not quite certain of. The picture kind of makes it look like it should have it, but eh, it's not a big deal. So yeah, you can't mount weapon mount, so I can't get the plus three accuracy out of that. So I'm kind of stuck with what the pilot's got as well as his targeting computer. So yeah, we got an energy suite plus in there, but let's see what we actually managed to steal. Uh, let's see. So there is a clan Gauss rifle and a pair of Gauss rifle, or and a pair of Howitzer 2000s. So the Howitzer 2000 does 30 damage. Interesting. Um, that does not appear to be all that amazing. Does area of effect damage within 30, 60 meters of the impact, additional area of effect within 30 meters of the primary, two primary and secondary targets. So it's receiving two sets of splash and the direct of 30. Uh, let's go see if we can't find some ammunition first. Uh, oh, by the way, you may have noticed we now have quantities. I have finally given in and installed the magnet after one of my subscribers and person who came out to the Discord pointed out that this system actually now works exactly in the way that I wanted it to. Uh, so, yeah, we're going to be using loot magnet from now on unless something crazy happens, but I don't anticipate that happening. Yeah, uh, so an interesting addition to the system. We can now get things like, ooh, double ammo gas, that. But as you can see, it's bundled things like the heavy rifle, ammunition, and the like. Uh, so I'd also like to grab both of these upper recos because this, these I can use on the, what should I call it, the gauntlet because it does have upper arm actuators. <laughs> so I didn't see any howitzer ammo. Unless it just uses normal heavy rifle ammo, but that cannot be the case. I refuse to believe such such madness. Clan Pharaoh would be nice, lovely to have. Oh, just a straight up fire control system, Gauss. Gee, thanks. Uh, now you're making my life difficult. Um, yeah, you're gonna have to give me that Clan Gauss rifle. Uh, the dragon may change. Actually, no. Ooh, you would be perfect for our Super Centurion. We started building him, and we didn't have a we didn't have a main gun from. This would do it. Yeah, that's probably my plan going forward. So what what do you use? This oh so it does use heavy rifle ammo. Huh. So this does appear to be significantly less powerful than I thought it was. I w walked out of the field expecting this to be something amazing. Like, not quite long tom levels, but maybe sniper artillery levels, and it is clearly not. So fire control system Gauss for the additional plus three accuracy to Gauss rifles anyway. The Gauss rifle clan itself, which is just amazing, and a double ammo. 
which gives us additional rounds. So 18 shots. I, I would never need any more gas rifle than that. Well, maybe. Gives me a couple additional shots, which is nice. Patchwork materials are interesting. Reinforced legs would be really nice to get, just because I could probably put them on some other mechs. But they do add weight, which would be a bit of a problem. So unless I'm building a mech specifically designed to just tank damage, it uh, doesn't work out so great for us. So it does just use heavy rifle ammo. Plus 50% armor damage, minus 50%. Where does it say? Yeah, I think there needs to be a little bit more description on how the howitzers work with heavy rifle ammo. Unless they're about to change their ammo type. But in any event, I think this is what we're going to get. The double gauss rifle ammo to go with the gauss rifle itself. The fire control system gauss and one of the upper recoils. I'm going to just kind of pray and hope for the other upper recoil. We got three parts of that urban mech. So that's nice. So three parts of an Urban Mech 2C. We got another two parts. I wonder if I can combine these two. That will be an interesting test. Anyway, so we got one of the howitzers and the HVAC-10. So that was the R60H had the HVAC-10, uh, which is basically an AC-10, except it has extra super long range and has a chance of blowing itself up. Uh, we've managed to pick up a pair of fire control system recoils, which uh, that's not terrible. Fire control system standard, a gyro double XL, which is very nice. Thank you. Would have probably grabbed that if I'd actually seen it. I must have gone right by it. So yeah, this was a pretty good pickup. I mean, it was just urban mechs, but they had some really nice equipment, and we've now picked up a really good gun, which is going into one specific mech of ours. I was wondering what I was going to have to rob from other mechs, but at the end of the day, I think this will work out very nicely in the Centurion. It's not a silver bullet gas, but it is. It's lighter than the silver bullet gas. Ooh, th that's going to be so nice. The Centurion that we have is not. It's not. Oh, I should call it ROM 2, because that's that's going to be what it's going to be in terms of equipment. It's going to be ROM Mark 2 with a big old ballistic and then a whole a couple of other support weapons, and it being a 55-ton Centurion. So I am just psyched. 21,000, most of that is probably from that single Gauss rifle hit. <laughs> Everything else was just kind of ignorable and light, but that Gauss rifle took a lot of damage. Still, it's only going to be a single day to fix the gauntlet. Two days on the Starhawk, because apparently that just thing just takes forever. Griffin's at 25 days, Wolverine's at 17, the Dragon is at 18, and the Centurion down at the bottom for 15, because we didn't have the kit for it. But now I have a piece of kit for it, so that will probably move up a little bit soon. Who are we waiting on? we got two days before the A-team is ready to go. So that will be when we go. First, we're going to check out the mech bay, though, because I want to see if Urban Mech 2C parts combine. Do they? Do they literally? They, I think they do. Yep. They're combinable. All right. Ready me up an Urban Mech 2C. Let's go steal some more client parts. Uh, let's go take... I was not impressed by the artillery. I'm sorry. I just was not. Ooh, but maybe they have special uppers. Yeah, whatever. Confirm it. A prototype that only entered service, entered limited development, the 2G swaps the standard HAG-20 for a Gauss rifle. I would love to HAG-20. An Intersphere double XL gyro and an XL double XL engine, that's why he blew up immediately, free up the tonnage needed to mount the rifle. Needless to say, it wasn't popular with most warriors assigned it. Production was eventually cancelled in 3074 due to unacceptably high losses under combat conditions. I can believe it, but the only reason we built this was to rip it apart. Like, that, that's why I built this mech. So if you were excited to see us build an urban mech, I'm sorry, but I just built this thing to see if any of the equipment would survive. What's it? The double XL engine, which I won't ever use. Ooh, except maybe on the ha on the Mr. Stabby. Clan Ferrofibrous. Double Clan Ferrofibrous? Oh, no, that's part of the dynamic. Okay. Patchwork materials tier two. And yeah, that eh, I would have liked a lot more. Most of the really good stuff went away, but it's not terrible. 66% engine, but you have gigantic sides. Uh, yeah, we're going to cancel the loadout and we're going to sell the mech just to get the parts real quick. So, yep, parts removed. Or mech's promo is stand, chassis removed permanently from your inventory. Yes. All right, so uh, Mr. Stabby, of course, could now get a brand new... If he's got enough slots, I don't know if he's slot limited. He's not. Lovely. Uh, so what we would do is we'd come around here and we'd go pick up the clan double XL engine which takes up two more additional slots but gives him one and a half tons it's a little disappointing I'm com if I'm completely honest I was expecting a little bit more so in that case I don't think I need it I mean what would I do with one and a half tons probably nothing so we'll save it maybe something interesting will come along but I kind of doubt it 
All right, so we only have three mechs available, but that is usual because we just came off a mission. So let's wait two days for the 18 to be ready. And I am going to need a fairly decent supply of units. Do I wait another day for the Wolverine? I mean, there's really no reason to do it because... It'll be the Shadowhawk, the Shadowhawk, the Bushwhacker, the Hatchet Man. Or not, not the Bushwhacker. The Shadowhawk, the Shadowhawk, the Gauntlet, and the Hatchet Man. The Bushwhacker is interesting, but he's a little bit out overshadowed by, by the Gauntlet. Just a little bit. Because of the Advanced Mask, which just makes him ridiculously fast. And I don't really need the Wolverine 6M other than to rip off a couple of parts from him so I can put it into the Centurion later on. So yeah, that'll be our force. Let's just double check the A team, make sure that everybody is skilled up because the next, the reason why I'm sort of going slow into this build up is because the next mission that we're taking is going to be terrifying, and I am very, very concerned about whether or not we're going to be able to pull it off, because it's not just a reasonably higher skull mission than what we're normally used to taking. It's an assassinate mission, but it's an assassinate that pays three of thirteen, three and a half. I gotta do it. I mean, it's just too good not to take, but it's also potentially incredibly dangerous. The Federated Sons are not gonna be happy with us, but the Federated Sons can get over it, cause well, they're being they're paying us out really well. So Hammer go to Hatchman Exodus in his Starhawk. Ripper will drive the Gauntlet and Witness in the Shadowhawk. Oh, yeah, I know. We are a two and a half skull going against a three and a half skull. Kick it off. Let's go rock and roll. Hopefully I have designed sufficiently good mechs. I have two mechs that do scatter really well. I've got two mechs that do pinpoint really well. And the two mechs that do pinpoint really well are incredibly quick. Oh crap, I didn't put the recoil mounter on it. That's plus one accuracy would help, but it's... I need to get a second one of those. Upper arm actuators are actually something that we kind of really need now. Because... The gauntlet can't take lower arm actuators, which the weapon mount is. So the weapon mount, double or triple plus, or however many pluses is it, it's a fantastic piece of equipment. Ooh, could I combine it with an upper? Could I do that for four accuracy? Because if I can, that's what's... Then the Centurion is getting that. We will turn that Gauss rifle into the, uh, into the eye of God to just put pinpoint shells everywhere we want. Anyway. And we're back after the briefest of crashes. We started doing this mission just a little bit, and unfortunately the game became slightly unstable, but we're gonna rock and roll and start as if nothing had happened, because nothing had happened. Anyway, Renegade, one of our covert facilities was breached, Commander, in what appears to have been an inside job. A mech warrior stationed there station there murdered the rest of the staff and is defecting to the Federated Sons, making a valuable local government mech with her. The facility is a total loss, but we don't want that mech falling into enemy hands. Track down the renegade and destroy her mech. We believe she's being escorted by Davian forces, and there's a bonus if you can destroy them as well. 282,600 Seabills, a 3.5 scale mission, 3 of 13 priorities, Helvage. Let's go drop in. Now this crash was actually really irritating because the mission proved to be incredibly easy. There was a single, uh, not Gallant, what is it? Uh, it begins with a G. Gosh darn it. Two PPCs, two large lasers. Um, Galahad, that's it. So it was a uh, Galahad plus a Brutus, a Striker, and a Von... Not a Von Lochter. <laughs> a uh, J. Edgar. And they engaged us right in this area. We annihilated them in the course of two turns. And then there was a Jaeger mech with twin, twin Rack 5s, which I was all geared up for the rematch of us against a Jaeger mech with Twin Rack 5s. Because if you'll remember, that was the mech that actually ripped the arm off of our uh, off of our hatchet man, destroying the claws with it. So I was all really pumped up to actually get a rematch going on that one. And then the game crashed pretty much as soon as I moved the Ripper into range to actually start engaging him. He had one salvo where he just blazed away, which was pretty interesting. He managed to hit the the uh, hatchet man once, and then we cut off his line of sight because we destroyed the, uh, what were we fighting? The striker at the time. Or was it the J. Edgar? It was one of the two. And so, because of that, he, he couldn't see us and then had to start running forward, and so we just responded by running in towards him. Alright, let's go see if we can't find our enemies a little bit. I have half of an idea of where they're going to be, 
the Galahad spawned right up here. The brute the uh, Brutus and the Striker over here and the Jaeger was somewhere around here. He dived right on top of us and came right here in a short order, but it wasn't all that difficult to deal with for obvious reasons. Uh, we're just going to sprint right on up here. Hey, look, it's a hoplite this time. A quick draw. Wow, this is much more dangerous. A blackjack and a crusader. Yeah, so the first time I did this mission, it was super easy. I had four, one mech and three other fairly weak vehicles, and now this... This is gonna be a fight. <laughs> Holy crap. Uh, Hammer, you're going to reserve. I'm going to hope that one of these idiots will actually come within visual range of me so that I can hit him with a hammer of some description. I don't want to get anybody too separated from the group, though. We are going to probably reserve Hammer down basically into the basement unless somebody actually maneuvers within range of us. So the Crusader is particularly dangerous. He's fairly effective at longer range. The Hoplites, generally we've seen them with a PPC and an LRM. Uh moderately effective they're king crab looking things but they're not that dangerous quick draws we are intimately familiar with depending on the variant and i don't anticipate too much trouble from it although he's a 60 ton mech i gotta give him some credit for that and the blackjack is a pj1 so mostly ignorable please just go to the basement thank you oh wait everybody went already you don't say uh okay then let's get on top of targets and in fact i'm going to kick on the mask because the mask is safer to have active also you, i think we can have the mask on for just a little bit longer than we can have the supercharger on and still be effective so we're going to do that so we can make sure that we have line of sight on the hoplite and maybe we'll get lucky and we'll still be fairly high on the initiative order i have no qualms with destroying the hoplite i'm not interested in taking it intact 21 despite all those reserves uh, so the hoplite is handled the quick draw we're gonna need to take so let's get i'd like a side angle that will do you're an 18, we don't know about you two, but that 18 does not beat my 21, I'll have him dead. Hi, quick draw, are you right side biased? Uh, probably. Warlord it up, just make sure that we can deal the maximum damage. He's out in the open, this will be the most effective time to use Warlord. And there goes, oh, arm is open, leg, take the leg, not quite. Hip is destroyed, so that is gonna slow him down. Uh, Ripper and Hammer is up, Hammer is going to Berserker. Uh, he's also gonna shut off his mask, cause he does not need it anymore. Make sure that we're not risking ourselves needlessly. And the only shot is a back shot, and I'm about to deal 356 damage to him. Didn't quite kill him, actually. Surprisingly enough, he actually managed to survive that. So, engine compact crit? What's a compact engine? I mean, smaller critical spaces, but it should be larger then, isn't it? I'm going to ignore him because he's on the ground this round, which means he's not dangerous to us. Uh, the gauntlet, we can actually move incredibly quickly if we feel the need to. I don't, though, because I can actually get the angle that I'm looking for. What I do need to do, though, before we move, though, and I found this out before the crash. Uh, actually, no, we found this out in the last mission. Capacitors need to be activated before you actually move. Otherwise, they will not work. So we're going to run on forward here. We're going to warlord it up. Go maximum damage on this one. Only 58? I don't believe that for a second. Are you guarded somehow? In any event, you're about to be on the ground. Oh, he got a head hit on that one. Unfortunately, it doesn't appear to do any stability damage at all. Not gonna lie, a little confused. Um, This right here may actually be the best position. Oh, crap, we've already identified him. It's a Highlander. <laughs> so that's the Renegade, by the way, in case you weren't aware. That could be really, really bad. Uh, we're loaded up. Let's take this quick draw down. Honestly, I should be more worried about the Crusader, but I'd like to take the quick draw off the field relatively quickly. So there's half his mech. Unfortunately, we didn't cause any anime explosions to rip apart the entirety of the mech. That would have been useful. And Crusader is, of course, going to do his Crusader work. Long range he's got. I believe he has two LRM-15s. I'm not super familiar with Crusaders. I know they're a very preferred mech from the community that people were expecting to come to MechWare Online for a long time and never did. And you're a Blackjack BJ-1. Two AC-2s, four medium lasers. You're totally ignorable. I have no worry with you. I do worry about you because you potentially have a Gauss rifle. Yeah, you got a Gauss rifle. And you managed to completely nail the gauntlet in one shot in what was frankly amazing hoplite is up again we're gonna have to hit him one more time to actually take him down i was not expecting the highlander to be involved in this combat and he's gonna pr pr provide a little bit more of a barrage on the gauntlet so we're gonna have to probably use this structure here to give us a little bit of protection and it looks like the quick draw is going over a bunch and he's hit us as well wow they're really uh beaten up on the gauntlet i'm not quite sure why although he did prov prov provide his other side all right let's go kill this guy and I can do it while standing still. 
Hi, Jam by ECM, but I'm also protected by a lot of things. There we go. He's not in the fight anymore. So 25% of the escort has been destroyed. It's not the most dangerous part of the escort, but he was kind of dangerous. I don't want to present my back to any of these guys, so I am going to... Oh, wait. Really? You, you literally did that for me. Huh. Thank you. Um, that's much appreciated. I needed that. All right, so he decided to prevent, present his back to us. Let's see if we can't just core him out real quick. Okay, that's two down. And it's a very... It, this is a stock-ish. It's a 30-25 quick draw. I'm not interested in keeping anything about him alive. I could move the Starhawk into position to go up to the Blackjack, or I could start trying to dive on top of him. I'm going to maneuver here, because it looks like he doesn't have a line of sight of me without having to move, which will help us out a little bit. Hi! I have a large X-Pulse laser. Do you care? Uh, maybe a pair of machine guns, pair of medium lasers. I'm going to guess two SRM-4s and two LRM-15s. That is my guess. Uh, I need to get on the move with this thing fast, because this mech cannot afford to stand still for very long. Uh, so let's go mask to active again. Oh, wait, have we activated this mask yet so far? I think this might be his first turn. So this will allow us to get wherever we need to be, including up to his back. Which I don't think that I need, but what I am going to do is I'm going to Vigilance. And the reason why I'm going to Vigilance is one, it'll let me move faster next turn. Two, it'll allow me to stop even in the open to protect myself. And three, oh, do I not have that shot? I don't think I do. Do I risk that? 70 damage, yeah, that'll punch right through his back armor. Yeah, I think this is going to have to be the better choice. We're not in cover, but we are under the protection of Bulwark. So, hi. Two good hits on him. Okay, so he's now going to be sensor impaired. I, the sensors impaired won't stack, though, because it is just normal BBC. Crusader's going to go in for a punch. Looks like the Crusader is a super hyper festooned Phoenix Hawk. And he's put his back towards friendlies. Lovely. So we can run up and kill him, basically. And Gauss Rifle? No, just indirect fire. Lovely. So we're mitigating the Highlander. He's not able to provide as much support as he otherwise would like. Witness! Uh, I need you into this guy's back. Oh. That's that's beautiful. Let's just fry him. So, Crusader, I don't have any parts with Crusader. I don't feel bad about blowing it into little tiny pieces. So that's kind of my plan. Although if Hammer comes up... Oh, Ripper's up. Uh, Ripper, I would like to protect as best as possible. So if I can get a non-direct line of Also... Uh, mask off. Capacitor stays on. Do I have a movement that gives me a shot into his back that doesn't expose me to fire? I don't think I do. Can I walk that? I cannot. So we are going to have to run this. It's a short distance. I could keep the mask on to avoid the run, but I'm going to work with that. Oh, that, that did something. Yeah, we tore him apart. Lovely. So the Crusader's now down. Ammo explosion. That's what ripped him apart so badly. So we need to cut his observers down to nil. And the way we can do that is by getting a line of sight on him. Hi. Uh, did somebody else show up? I thought for a second I saw another mic. Okay. Uh, so we get a line of sight on him. And we open fire on him. Cause lots of fun little damage, but it's not really important if we're completely honest with ourselves. And Hammer has been waiting in the wings with his mask. And potentially his supercharger. We're going to see what he needs. Was mask enough? It was not. But you know what will be enough? The supercharger as well. So with mask and supercharger engaged, the two will bring each other into maximum efficiency, allowing us to run right up next to this guy and cutting right through him. That is the loveliness of this mech. Oh, I think he's dead, but we couldn't see it because he just moved way too quickly for eyes to notice. So yeah, half of this mech is now gone. He's still got some of his mech left. That's really unfortunate, actually, because the goal was to remove him from the fight so that nobody would be able to shoot at us. That didn't quite happen. So he's, of course, going to probably get a shot on us. He's quite high. Yep. Oh, no, it's indirect fire only. Okay, I can work with that. Hatchman's got to get on top of the target, although Hatchman was incredibly evasive there. Uh, Ripper, I need the capacitor off because we're starting to really build up fail chance here. And mask to on because I'm going to need a little bit of speed on this one. We've got to get a line of sight on him. Uh, well, at the same time, getting close without providing one. So let's see if we can't take away his spy. 
Oh, that's beautiful. I'm very... I'm feeling very good about the snub. I think the twin snub was a good idea. Uh, you, I can get on top of him. Yeah, I can get on top of him. We're gonna do that. Next turn, I'll be able to run up and hit him with a berserker. Do you have a line of sight? I don't have a line of sight! No! He's been hit. <laughs> uh, yeah, Gauss Rifle. He's got a whole lot of good equipment on him. You know, if we could steal him, that would be just aces. Uh, but I'm not sure that's gonna be a possibility. I have a direct line of sight if I move here. Get shot it though while I do it. Direct line of sight over here. A little bit more evasion. Hi. Come down the mountain. You want to come after me. Your goal? Oh, we tagged him. That's lovely. I need him to come down this mountain. I think he knows that. Because I have high confidence that he's going to shoot at me and not come down this mountain. I really need him to come down the mountain. Please come down the mountain. Are you going to come down the mountain? Cleverly, he did not come all the way down the mountain. Reserve. I need to f see if I can actually get a direct line of sight on this guy. It's going to be hard. Ooh. Ripper might be able to do it. Ripper might be able to get the direct line of sight. Heavy metal, so he's a special version of the Highlander. Exodus also potentially could do this. Um, I take that back. If Exodus had jump jets, Exodus could potentially do this. Okay, blast a little bit of firepower into him. I don't think we're penetrating him yet, unfortunately. Kind of wish we were getting headshots here. Okay, Ripper's going to keep the advanced mask on, right? Uh, yes. Do I PPC? Take a crit and damage. I PPC. Capacitor active. So we're going to activate the capacitor. Let it reset on that. We're going to run. Oh, and we can get a direct line of sight on him. It's not quite as quickly as I would like. Hi, you're not actually in cover. Really? Um, Warlord, let's go for the full 92 here. Okay, we managed to hit him with both of them. And we knocked him down. That's helpful. Kind of. Um, it's helpful because he's going to be a lot less accurate. Alright, supercharger off. Mask to off. If you can still make it. You can. Okay, lovely. Um, do I Juggernaut? If I Juggernaut, I will deal 300 damage. That won't quite kill him so long. Even if I step on his torso, that won't kill him. Alright, let's hope for the headshot. Come on, step on his head, step on his head, step on his head, step on his head, step on his head. Uh, okay. I'll take it. <laughs> you took out everything except the Gauss rifle. So, uh, the kind of a win, kind of a loss. I mean, the win comes, of course, from the fact that, hey, it's a Gauss rifle, but we recently picked up a clan Gauss rifle, which is just a little bit better. Just a little bit. So, yeah, there should be three, four Highlander parts. That might be worth grabbing just the Highlander parts. This will be interesting to see just sort of what sort of mix we've got going. Because that would be our first assault mech parts. Uh, Crusader, we have no parts. Two, one, and two, and three, and there would be a four. So that's my current thought. The Gauss Rifle is a Blackwell Gauss Rifle. Uh, has additional accuracy. What's the problem with it? One, uh, one evasion pip ignored by this weapon, plus one accuracy with this weapon. The weapon has a flat 15% jam chance mitigated by gunnery. Okay, so there's a chance it blows up. Uh, Blackwell has increased accuracy and an increased jam rate. High energy capacitors discharge violently for 50 damage when destroyed. That's not terrible. Think about it. Uh, cockpit basics, Artemis fire control systems, normal fire control systems, cockpits, double heat sinks, jump jets, jump jets, sensor flight. Plus 10% death from above damage. No, thank you. I don't I don't want to kill myself doing it. Alright, so the Blackwell Gauss Rifle is the only thing worth keeping. I mean, then there's also the the two tons of Gauss Rifle ammo. Because I currently don't have any. But I do have my double ton, which is fine. So let's go. Do I really need a Blackwell Gauss Rifle? Compared to my silver bullet, does it stack up? Kind of. It kinda does. Let's hope we're lucky. Oh my god, we are. So we got four Highlander parts. If we run into any other Highlander, we just blow it apart because we've got it. I hope you're compatible with a whole bunch of things because technically you're a special version of it. But yeah, he had an X he had a 275 rated XL. That was a mistake. That was a significant this is why you don't put XL engines in your anything bigger than a light mech. So it's got a hoplite, quick draw, picked up the gas rifle. 
And that's about it. But you know what? That's reasonable. I mean, we got all four parts of the mech. That's beautiful. I, it doesn't get much better than that, if I'm completely honest. So, one more part to a Highlander. If we run into it in a store, we could build a Highlander, and that would give us our first 90-ton assault. I don't know what I'd do with it, because we were starting to run out of kit to build with our 55-tonners. So, we would really need to pause and think about just exactly what we wanted to do. But, yeah. We've got... I believe that... I do believe those are our first assault mech parts. So, that'll work out quite nicely. Not quite sure what else is keeping us on this planet, though. Because everything else is like capture bases, which are incredibly dangerous at this level. Alrighty, so 31,000 for the next three days. Most of that... Uh, yeah, most of that was probably inflicted on the gauntlet. He got beat up pretty bad. Three-day repair? Really? <laughs> I love it so much. Uh, Dragon, you're going up above the Griffin. You're going to be the first of the new builds I want going. Because you're only 18 days, and that'll get you mostly complete. Uh, we are one day off from that. Three days off from the gauntlet. And we are three yeah three days away from the b team being ready to go all right a quick check of the store just in case because if there's a highlander part there then just too fortuitous it's just ridiculous let's go mech parts banshee commando locust thunderbolt wolverine yeah none of those work for me but three parts to locust could actually probably get another wolverine if i was really looking for it let's go check the mech bay real quick see if we actually built anything i don't think we did but it is worth checking. And it's easy to tell because the mech is highlighted in bright green. Which is a fantastic UI choice. But yes, our first mech parts. <laughs> for a assault mech. With any luck, we... That this will work with another... With another Highlander. And we could just run into one and steal it. So that means Steiner and Davian would probably be our primary targets. But yeah, okay. So we need to wait a couple of days. So let's go ahead and do that. One two and three stop so that puts us on we're building the we're building the next generation of mechs here so the next set is on the way our b team is ready to rock and roll let's go quickly get some experience because i do believe bullet trap finally got his level up and he did he's gonna go warlord so we'll lock him in as a warlord so he is the first of the b team to achieve level eight uh brother is not part of the b team and you are kind of getting close there too well, I could go for sensor lock. You can now sensor lock and move and shoot, which is huge. So, Hacker probably is going to move in the sensor lock direction. Hammer is... Wait, no, what? Huh. Oh, so Brother was the first one to actually make the level. Okay. Our melee people are way too good at their job. Alright, nothing's wrong. At least I don't think anything's wrong. I mean, we checked this already, right? All the mechs are available and ready to rock and roll. Let's go take a mission. See if we can't do a relatively quick one. I'm not quite sure what the time will be because because of the crash, my times are a bit split now. But I'd like to do a capture base. Capture bases are fun. With the B team on a two and a half, they should be able to handle that. Against local pirates who can potentially have clan mechs? Sure, why not? We have nothing to lose except our mechs. You have a weapon mount, which I'm probably going to rip off of there. I'm sorry, but you, you're you an interesting mech, but your PPC is not your main point. Your main point is those MRMs. So a capture base really would benefit from having just massed MRM firepower. The gauntlet would be a step down in that, because technically the gauntlet does take a pretty significant step down. We're only doing, what, yeah, 172 versus this Wolverine rocking and rolling with 197. This Shadowhawk even further. 246. This guy can practically knock on a base on his own. But I think that'll be fine. So we want the B team. So B team is brother in the hatchet band. Bull trap in the gauntlet. Because the gauntlet is essentially a bushwhacker. Hacker will be in the Shadowhawk and Majestic in the Starhawk. So this is an equal mission. Let's have a little bit of fun. 417 priority salvage. That should be very useful for us. We may get very lucky. We may get some really cool stuff out of it. Cross your fingers and hope. Also, I'm kind of hoping that the gauntlet doesn't take a whole lot of damage so I can, like, finish putting parts onto it. We have that recoil upper that I really want to put onto it, unless it can also fit onto the same mount as a weapon mount. But I thought the weapon mount took... Is it the upper and the lower arm? Or does it take the lower arm and the hand? Because you don't have to have a hand to use it. I thought it was just a lower. Yeah, that'll be an interesting thing to say. Capture the pirate research station. 
We have long suspected that there is a pirate research station hidden in the New Athens system, and we've finally gotten wind of its possible location. We need a few brave and plausibly deniable mercenaries to secure the location for a dropship extraction of any valuable scientific personnel. Two and a half skulls, four of seventeen priority salvage, three hundred thirty-eight thousand one hundred seals, which you know pays the bills quite nicely. Let's go say hi. Hopefully it's not going to be too dangerous. I mean, I'm, of course, terrified of incoming heavy shell fire because two of my mechs are not quite designed for it. Uh, you know what? Turn one is free. That could get me killed one of these days, but I'm going to keep banking on it for a little bit. Now, the one thing about the B team is their piloting skills are not quite at A team levels, which means they're not quite capable of using their equipment nearly as well, which is a bit of a problem. I mean, it's a problem we can work around, but it is a problem. Do I advance mask sprint you on top of the enemy? Oh, it would be so good. No, I'm not going to. We're going to run past the ice, use our gauntlet. I'm so glad we finally got this gauntlet. <laughs> we had been sitting on nine gauntlet parts forever. All right, let's go take a peek. Research facility, good view. Asher forces. Gun and placement for point defense, of course. Hi, uh, you're a heavy point defense system. These MRMs are probably not going to get through, are they? Wait, machine- oh, that's the AMS. I'm like, a machine gun? I don't have a machine gun. 11 of 30 missiles got shot down by that. Starhawk, you do not have to worry about the same problem. But you have just identified three other turrets. Uh, we've got an urban mech turret, apparently. As well as a Gauss emplacement, because of course. And another urban mech emplacement. So we got to kill the point defense turret. Otherwise, our MRMs are not going to have an easy time of anything. And then we need to take out that Gauss emplacement because Gauss emplacements. Did I read that right? I read 400 health. Are you outright kidding me? Capacitor on. We're going to need the ex extra damage. 80, 75. No, we'll walk it. Damage drop off is real. Warlord it. So we got a sensor's impaired, but we didn't break it. Not even remotely. And all I've got to add into this is a single medium laser. Oh, this is gonna be great. Hit something. Hit an ammo. Blow everything sky high. 400 health? That seems wrong. Gauss. Oh no, it's another missile shot. I'm waiting for the Gauss, because the Gauss is gonna be the terrifying one. Okay, luckily for us, it missed by 79%. Lovely. What in the holy hell are you? And can I kill you? A little bit of machine gun fire as well. Okay, you're... I can't ignore you. You you control too many of my weapons. Um... I gotta reserve... Bullet trap. Uh, bullet trap and... Probably your bestest buddy in the world. Hacker, or not Hacker, Majestic are going to have to take this thing down. No crits at all. Uh, and I can't just have you stand still because you would die. Can I get a single target only here? Not really. You're going to be seen by the gas emplacement, which means you're going to be shot up by the gas emplacement. It's going to suck. Come on, please stop causing problems to me. Good, okay, so the first turret is down. Took a lot of fire to make that happen, but it's down. Yes, what do we got here? Ermac UN has a rotary 5 pirate. Okay, it's not as dangerous as I thought it was. Still dangerous, but not as dangerous as I thought it was. So you're probably both the same. Are you literally an Ermac just sort of placed on top of a turret? You are. I suppose that's definitely one use for an Ermac. <laughs> I wouldn't use it that way, but you could definitely do that. Uh, sprint. Probably passing okay. too close. Uh, 300 health. Jeez. How am I supposed to kill anything around here? Um. You, yeah, you've got to die. We need to get more fire down. How do they have 300 health? 300 health is ridiculous. Supercharger on. Mast on. I'm going to actually see if I can hit him. He looks like he's on the ground and not on a pedestal. If that's the case, then I can touch him. Okay. And reset. Hey, I can touch him. So we're going to stand outside the thing, but this should deal enough damage to actually kill him. Can't see it, but we got it. Lovely. It had to be censored. 
You cannot show that kind of graphic violence on TV, much less YouTube. All right, so it looks like we've taken out the dirt. Lovely. And he is quite evasive and right on top of the enemy. Woo, you missed me by 23%. Looks like he was shooting the urban head. A little missile fire coming in. Okay. You, uh, maybe you're different. I mean, you're firing missiles at me rather than racks, so... Hack. Hacker, my buddy, my pal, my friend. I need you to just blitz him with so much missile fire that he has no idea what's about to happen to him. Oh good, I was worried for a moment that he might have some sort of defense. No crits at all were dealt in that entire round of shooting. What's my 20%? Yeah, shut that capacitor off. I'm not gonna risk it. Are you nuts? Of course I'm not gonna risk it. Uh, you know what? Yeah, we can do it from here. 88 damage is gonna be nowhere near enough, but I do have another mech that I can invest in it. So keep lobbing the PPC fire. I'm loving just how chill our mechs are. It makes life so much easier. What do you got? Do I see? An MML-20. Huh. I didn't realize MMLs came that large. I'm not complaining, but I'm surprised to see that they're so huge. I thought MMLs were like a maximum of 12. So we need to go... Preferably not passing through that, so I will not. Because it'll activate reinforcements the moment I do. Uh, maybe not. Okay, maybe I can zip on through without them worrying. Come on, crit something. Anything. No. No crits for us. We need to get more stuff for critting people. Uh, please take it out. I'm not going to mess around with this one. This had better just fall. Lovely. Firing enough firepower to actually remove it. We've got one more turret to take care of. That will be, of course, the primary thing. And the MMLs. If I'm honest, I'm not super worried about MMLs. I just don't really feel the fear of it. Which maybe is a major mistake. Reinforcements have arrived, okay. So we've got to kill this quick. Where are the reinforcements? We don't know. Okay, that's that's going to be how that works. I see. Um, yeah, you're going to maneuver around here. You're going to take a shot. It's going to be lovely. Plink, plink. Lovely. So one hit. And still nothing on sensors, but that's fine. So the goal, of course, will be to get on top of him and just fill him full of so much fire that he can't do anything. Hi. Just do not survive, please. So we missed one laser. And we've heavily damaged it. Hacker can potentially finish this thing off. Hacker has the potential firepower. Hacker, please. So let's go see if we can't remove a pretty significant threat. To be fair, this turret is not insanely dangerous, but it takes up an initiative slot and it has enough firepower to make me Worried. Okay, you survived. Uh, luckily, I have one more mech available who will lob some PPC fire. Lovely. Okay, so all the turrets have been dealt with. The area is mostly pacified, and now the enemy gets to come on against us, and we're facing away. Got an urban mech. Saw that urban mech. You can't hide it from me. It's a very distinctive name. And this one is a... Ur it's another bloody urban mech posse. You know, there was a time when urban mechs were rarer than latinum. And now they're just everywhere. R60C, don't care. Could have taken this mission for money. We don't see anybody else, do we? Doesn't look like it. I refuse to believe, though, that it'll only be two urban mechs. There will, of course, be several. I really see the one, though, at the moment. Fairly decent accuracy, though. Put a fire in. Of course, it's an urban mech. He's not exactly moving very quickly. I really hope that there's a version of the urban mech that actually has an upgraded engine. Like, the way that people run them in MechWarrior Online, which is ridiculously good, by the way. If you ever want to see just a hilarious amount of firepower, check out somebody running a K9 Urban Mech. They're amazing. Capacitor's on, because we're going to rock somebody's world. Let it calculate. It's recalculated my damage properly. Uh, I'm not quite going to get within the ranges of rocking worlds, am I? Oh, we found more Urban Mechs. Oh, uh, we don't know the type. It's not a big deal. It's a bloody Urban Mech. Fire... Hey, we've opened up a CT. Probably most of that was the ER smalls. <laughs> I debated long and hard about putting a an ER medium or a uh, pair of ER smalls, and I finally decided to go with the ER smalls because I thought they were more interesting. It's like, gives me more redundancy, helps me crit seek just a little bit better. <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. I love it. Do that again. <laughs> he shot himself. What kind of urban mech are you? Oh, you're a gas rifle urban mech. Are you 2C? 
You are a 2C2G. Okay, I got you. Uh, so he, of course, needs to be taken. He's got a lot of good kit on board, so if we can take his legs, that would be ideal. I don't know what you were doing. Um, possibly those were thunders? It's not a really big deal. We'll figure it out. Um, so we have a bit of a problem. We gotta kill this everybody and then at the same time... Oh, you've got a double XL dry run. That's gonna make you easy to kill. Yeah, he's an RHW, which is one of those Howitzer 2000. That's a kill. <laughs> Just all those numbers continually f uh, firing off his corpse. Okay, uh, is it time to move you? Supercharger on, mask to on. If I do this, I will just absolutely core him out. I can never. Oh, I can only hit the one. So if I'm absolutely going to core him out, we're going to attack the left side. It's two, two thirty-seven. Oh, we didn't. Lovely. He's dead, but we didn't core out the entirety of the mech. Huh. Cool. Oh, we probably took out his engine. But it might be worth just grabbing all those urban mech bars because potentially there's a really good mech in there. All right, what do we got? We got R60C is a machine gun and an AC-10, and you are probably an AC-10 and a small laser. So we'll fire at you just to make sure that you know that you're loved. Wow, we managed to miss most of that X-Pulse shot. That is unfortunate. Bull trap, what are you running? Uh, your PPC capacitor is on and your advanced mask is on and you are still just nimble as can be i love it uh can you get behind you can surprise hi oh by the way i also have warlord now for maximum damage wow that was that was cruel and i love it good job so we need one more urban mech destroyed you know oh wait no he's got a missile launcher oh wait what what are you shooting could it be an LB that's just being really weird? Because I'm seeing missile fire. Unless I'm the only one. Am I going crazy? Is he firing cannons and I'm just not realizing it? See if we can't blow off his left side. See whatever we can save on that right. Okay, we've badly damaged him. That's lovely. Hacker will probably be able to finish this one off. Because Hacker's really good at this. Blast him. Yeah, you've got enough fire basically to smoke him. Oh yeah, we've got to actually get back there to claim it. We went a little bit too aggressive on them, unfortunately. Well, maybe not unfortunately. Oh no, they take it for us anyway. Good, lovely. All right. So that was interesting. I mean, the B team basically kind of got shafted in glory because instead of facing five mechs, including one assault, which was, you know, a Highlander, which was really cool, they had to duel it out with four urban mechs. To be fair, it was one of them was a clan urban mech, so. Gotta give him credit for that. Alright, so I'm thinking we just grab all the urban mech parts. Advanced AMS, a clan gas rifle. Ooh, he has a double. He has a double. A double gas rifle ammo. Composite is worthless. It's not worthless. It really, really isn't, but I don't like it at all. Uh ooh, advanced AMS. We don't really rely on that too much. I would rather have. Well, the fire control system gas would be really nice. The double XL gyro. If you lose your gyro, does your entire mech... Like, do you lose the mech? Because maybe I'm blazing an awful lot of risk on that. Patch from materials, reinforced legs, sensors, upper recoils. That'll give me my second uh, upper recoil that I need. And did that double gauss survive? That's the real question. Guided mortar, airburst, machine gun, HMG. Yes, it did. I'm going to dump the urban mech part. And I'm just going to sort of hope that we get one of them. And I'm hoping I get five urban mech parts. Oh, there's two double gases here. So good, though. Now we're taking this. So we got two urban mech 2Cs, which is all right. Uh, a couple of useless machine guns, a useless basic cockpit uh useless sensor basics why do these things clutter up the loot table we did get the watchdog suite which is nice uh so yeah a not terrible pickup really it's that urban mech that kind of gives you the stuff that you really care about everything else is ignorable yeah we have twin gauss rifles now i wonder what mech i could build with twin gauss rifles i would need well twin clan gauss rifles i need 24 tons plus an additional four tons of ammo so 28 tons of weapons 
but you could do Twin Gauss. And that would be really, really cool. I'm not sure what I could do. What mech I... Maybe the dragon. But depending on the fusion core. Yeah, the dragon with the right fusion core could probably pull it off. Just rock a double clan gauss rifle just coming on, dealing 70 damage to everybody every time you shoot from maximum range. But then again, that's kind of similar to what our... What our... God, what's the name? Gauntlet. I keep forgetting it. Alright, only 11,000 this time in a couple of days for the repairs, which means the B team will be basically fully ready to rock and roll by the time we're ready and finished here. How are we dealing? Yeah, Gauntlet's only... So, one day to set everybody straight, and then the dragon is once again back up on the repair block. That's nice. We're going to need two days until the A team is ready. So, let's cycle the two days. One, and two, and stop. Uh, let's give him the art of assassination to read. Maybe look. Hey, he gained assassin. I don't quite know what this does, but it's good, I believe. So able to take advantage of that. The art of assassin has been learned, and we are ready to go once again. But we're not going to because we have reached the end of the episode for the most part. Just want to do one quick check of storage. I was really hoping to have enough urban mech parts to try and build another 2C. <laughs> so we are one urban mech part away, which is... Hey, shop, do you have a... I, they, I don't think they have one, but... Do you have an urban mech part? Just one? No. I'll trade you an entire Banshee for a single urban mech part. That'll work, right? They'll they'll go for that one. Uh, flamers, the Versailles, Hazers... Flamers are so bad now. It's so sad. That used to be a really interesting weapon choice. Armored Cowl, Death from Above, and Fire Control Energy. Yeah, there's nothing there we care about. So let's double check here. So we are 15 days away from the Dragon. 22 days away from our Super Griffin. It's not a Super Griffin. There, there's literally a specific mech that is a Super Griffin. But 22 days away from our SLDF Griffin. 16 days away from our n new Wolverine. And 15 days before we can start tinkering with the Centurion again. Because it's not done by any stretch of the imagination. But we have some serious weapon modifications that we're going to be making to it. Because of a couple of things we found. Speaking of weapon modifications. Hey Gauntlet. Probably should have done this before. But I forgot. Let's go see if we can do that. Because I'm not quite sure I can. Oh, I can. I absolutely can. If I have two tons. <laughs> so if we manage to free up two tons, we can make this work. I can't put any special gyros on. It's already got a light engine. I'm going to have to tinker with this. But that would improve the accuracy by one and also take away their one recoil so they would never be less accurate. Then again, the pilots are already doing that ba based on their standard abilities. But yeah, you can't do that because it already has a gyro. It's an omni. You can't touch most of this. So you can't change the engine, you can't change the light, so you can't change the fusion core, you can't change the engine, you can't change the gyro, and you can't ch change the endo steel, and you can't change the advanced mask. Everything else go nuts with. Oh yeah, he also has a special targeting system energy, which we found, which was really cool. So I gotta figure out a place to pull out two tons, because that would allow me to throw in the twin upper recoils, but I'm not quite sure where that'll be. We've only got a single patchwork material to make that happen, so it's probably not going to be from that. But if we were to do that, we would get two, three, four, five. Plus five accuracy on our snub nose PPCs. That would be fantastic. Don't know if it'll be possible, though. Because I don't know if there's enough tonnage left in this mech to pull out. But anyway, that's going to do it for today's episode. I've been Tirak. If you like what you've been seeing, hit that like button and subscribe. If you want to see a notification every time I one of these videos, press the little bell icon. Leave a comment. What did you think of the mission? Also, ooh, this is big and important. If you stuck around to this point, you're probably a true, true trooper, true mech warrior with, with whom stands two, or also possibly someone from the Discord. Uh, so next week, I believe? Or the week after, Urban Warfare is coming out. The next expansion pack for Battletech. And the question I pose to you, the viewer, is sh do you guys want to see us continue playing our Rogue Tech campaign, going through all that we've been going through with the Rippers Rumblers and on the Saturday stream with the Black Sheep Squadron, and just keep doing that until Rogue Tech finally updates to Urban Warfare? And that could take a while or it could take almost no time at all. It's going to very much depend. Although I do anticipate it'll probably take a while because there's a lot of new game systems that Urban Warfare is bringing. So do we want to continue Rogue Tech, or do we want to go over to Urban Warfare, back to Vanilla, and start a standard company? 
and run through the career mode until Rogue Tech is ready to go. Leave your thoughts in the comments below. I'm going to be very interested to hear from you. And I will see you all in the next episode.